Hey guys, welcome to Learning for Cause. Today, I'm doing a video on mean, median, mode, and range, like a basic stats video. So let's first start with mean. So what is mean? It's basically the average of the data set, like what the norm would be. You calculate the mean by adding all the numbers and then dividing it by the total number of data points. So this is the formula written out, sum of all data points by total number of data points. Data points are numbers. I just use data points because usually we do this when you're dealing with data, but if it numbers, same thing. <laughs> Alright, so this is the first example. So let's first figure out how many numbers there are total. So you just you could just count. One, two, three, four, five. So you have five. Now you have to first add all the points. So we can go our, to our calculator and do that. So you have 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus 8. 5 equals 31. Now 31 divided by 5 is 6.2. Six point two is the average. So let's do one more example, and I it will also try to include some links of some helpful sites that you could go to to practice more, and they have good explanations too if you're still confused. So I'll link those sites down below, since like more practice is always better. So here you have our site. We have our second example. So let's count how many we have total. One, two, three, four. It's four total, and now let's add all of them together. Let's clear the calculator. We have five plus three. Oh, whoops. Five plus three plus two plus nine equals 19 divided by four, 4.75. Sorry. And so that is your average. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, this is great and all, but how can I apply this in real life? And there's obviously, you have to use this when you're doing, like, in science, with when you're dealing with data points, but if you're like, how can I apply this to every day? So I'm assuming you all probably are still in school. So there's grades. You always have grades for so many assignments. And Sometimes you want to know, okay, so if I have this much, you know, this is my grade for each assignment, what would my final grade be for the quarter or semester? Well, you can use the average. And uh, keep in mind, if your grades are weighted, for example, if tests count 15% and project, projects count 10 and etc., then it won't really work this way. Um, but if everything is weighted the same, then you can just find the average of every grade of every assignment. So these are, just pretend these are your grades. So you got a 90 on a test, 80 on a, another test, 94 on another test, and 100 on another test. So you'd be like, okay, so what would my final be? Your final grade. So let's see how many grades are total. One, two, three, four. So four. And then you add all these together. Ninety plus eighty plus ninety-four plus a hundred equals three sixty-four. We have three three sixty-four divided by four. Now, obviously, you can do this by hand, but for right now, I'm just going to do it in the calculator. But it's going to be ninety-one. Ah, but just to make sure, I'll do it. Okay, I'll fix that. I'll do it on the calculator. So you have 364 divided by 4. You got a 91. So this is really helpful if you listen like normal life. So now you know, okay, my grade for the quarter would be 91%. Okay, so let's move on to mode. All right, so on to mode. So what is mode? Mode is the most repeated number in a data set. 
So the number that appears the most. So let's look at some examples. In this one, which number appears the most? So you have 1, 3, 1, 5, 1, 7, but oh look, you have 3, 8. So that's why the mode for this one would be 8. Let's look at the next example. You have two fives, you have two twos, one, I mean two threes, one two, and one nine. So you're like, oh, there's two modes, right? There's kind of like a little tie here. Five and three are repeated the most. So you're wondering, is that possible? Yeah, it's okay. So like, fun fact, when there are two modes, most repeated data values, basically modes, when there are two modes, it's called bimodal. And I'm pretty sure I spelled this wrong. Yep, there is no O. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, so think of mode as something that's kind of optional. There could be one mode, there could be more than one mode, there could be multiple modes, or there can be no modes, you know? You can have no modes. Maybe there's, maybe each data set just repeats one time each. Then there's not really a mode. All right, let's do one more example. Since this is, mode is really easy. Just remember the one that's the most repeated. So let's see, we have 1, 5, 1, 7, 1, 3, 1, 9, 1, 2, and 1, 5. Wait a second, 5 was repeated twice. Uh, test questions may trick you that way because they may not be in numerical order, so you can get confused. So a good idea would be to rewrite it in numerical order, and maybe like, oh, that's just time consuming. Well, it can help you because in median, when you're trying to find the median, you have to do that. So here you have two fives, therefore the mode is five. So mode is really easy. This is not a hard concept. Just remember the most repeated number. All right, so let's go on to range. So range is also another really easy concept in stats. It's just the difference between the largest and smallest number. All right, so it's really easy. You get to find the difference. If you don't know the differences, it's the product of subtracting. All right, so let's do some examples. Let's look at the first one. So you have three, eight, nine, and 10. Which one's the largest? So you can tell 10 is the largest and the smallest is three. So difference between largest and smallest number, what's 10 minus three? Dun, 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 seven. All right, so let's do the next one. Here, as you can see, there is a mode. There's 15 and 15. But let's find the largest and smallest number. And also remember, this is not always going to be in numerical order. So you have to be like, okay, which one is the largest? So here we know the largest is 15. And the smallest is 5. So what's 15 minus 5? 10. All right, so like I said before, this isn't always going to be in numerical order. So you have to pay attention. Don't be like, okay, this is the smallest, this is the largest. No, no, it's not. The smallest can be in the middle and somewhere, and the largest can be like on another side. I don't know. But always look carefully for the smallest and largest. So here the largest is 98, and the smallest is 5. You may get tricked and be like, oh, it's 7, but no, it's 5. So largest minus smallest. So you have 98 minus 5, which is 93. So that's range. It's very simple. Just think about, you know, from the biggest number to the smallest number, what's the difference, you know? How much space is there in between? How many numbers? How far away? But it's not distance. <laughs> I, 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 that's just a way for you to think of it. But it's the difference between the largest and smallest number. So now we're going to move on to median. It's basically the middle value of the data set, the number in the middle. Now, if you ever get confused about what a median is, just think about like a road. There's traffic coming from this side and traffic going from this side. There's usually a area of grass or trees or cement like right here in the middle. That's actually called the median. So that's really helpful if you ever forget. All right, so let's look at this data set. 9, 4, 3, 2, 5. 
and it's the middle value of the data set. So a lot of people just be like, okay, uh, you just find the middle like, oh, it's three, but it's the middle value of the data set. And it has to be in numerical order in order for you to figure this out. So always remember, put it in numerical order, numerical order. It has to be numerical order. And this, it looks like it's three, but no, you have to put it in numerical order. That's very, very important. So let's do that. You have two, three, four, five, nine. Now you can look at it and find the middle value. So there's two methods to this, actually. One is to cross off until you reach the middle. So basically, you just do this. One from one side, one from the other side. One from this side, one from this side. You have a number remaining. That's four. There you go. That's your median. Another method is kind of like a formula. It's the number of values, the number of total values. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five numbers, right? Let's follow the formula. Plus one, and then divided by two. All right, so five plus one is six, divided by two equals three. You're like, wait a second, it's the median's three. Wait, no. This is, this the whatever solution you get to this method, it tells you the place, like which position it's going to be. And this, so this, he says, it's going to be the third number. So basically, we read left to right, so we're going to go left to right. The median is going to be the third number in the list. So it's not saying the value itself, it's just saying where it's located. So it can be helpful and you don't have to do the whole crossing off thing. Usually it's helpful when you have a really large data set. So here, the third number. One, two, three. Once again, you come back to four. So that's the median. All right, so what if you have an odd number of data? I mean, an even number of data, sorry. If we have an odd number of data, then it's really easy since you can use this method and you'll get one digit, uh, one number. But if you have even number of data, like you have four values instead of five, then you're gonna have something else. So let's have an example here. One, two, three, four, let's just use that. I know, very creative. So let's do the cross off until you reach the middle part. One, two, you have two numbers. Let's use the other method, number of values. So you have four plus one divided by two. So here you have five over two. And you have, you don't get a, like a common place. You get two halves. So let's think about why you get that. So you, you look in your number line, you're like, okay, where's two halves? One, two, right here. See what happens when you have an even like number of data? You end up with two, and you have to find the middle number. This is when you have to add these two numbers. So add them and divide it by two. And so you add that together, you get um, 5 divided by 2, it's 2.5. Now, it was a coincidence this time that this match it matched up, but these two numbers could have been 6 and 1 divided by 2, which would be 7 divided by 2 and wouldn't be 2.5. But this way, here you got lucky and it worked out. So the median is 2.5. Now, does this look, or, oh god, that was a really bad box. Does this seem familiar to you? All right, let's see. Remember what, how we calculated mean, how we calculated the average? We took the sum and divided it by the total number of values. Isn't that what you're essentially doing here? You're taking the sum of the two numbers. Here we have two, two and three. And then dividing it by the number of numbers. And here, because there's when you're doing the median, it's going to be two numbers. You're dividing it by two. 
So basically, when you have an even number of uh, data, then you can just, you just have to find the average or the mean. So this is how it kind of comes full circle back to what we were first talking about. It's kind of cool. So that's that. I will try to link some more practice worksheets in the description box, anything that I find online that can be helpful for you guys to practice. But what I would do is just, you know, practice, practice, practice. That's what makes perfect. So thank you guys for watching our video on basic stats, and I hope you liked it. I hope it was helpful. Please comment down below if you have any questions or if you have any other suggestions for videos that we can do in the future. So please like this video and subscribe. Thank you.